Let's see what we do know. We'll go hieroglyph by hieroglyph. The first three are easy. The Ankh is life. The banner hieroglyph is God. And the Nefer is good. The next hieroglyph is new. Look at it carefully. It's part of a hieroglyph we're familiar with. Hint. Think numbers. Fractions. Yes, it's part of the Eye of Horus. See, it's the lower two pieces. This was pronounced teyet, and it means likeness. Next, we have the solar disk, but no stroke. So it's not day, it's Ray, the sun god. Normally, we might expect the god determinant of hieroglyph, but on something as small as the edge of a mirror, space is limited, so abbreviations are to be expected. Next, we have a word that looks familiar, but in a form slightly different from what we're used to. What word does it look like? Yes, per, to go forth. Remember, the actual name of the Book of the Dead is per em haru, the going forth by day. This new word has the same root, but with some extra hieroglyphs. One is the little circle, which usually means something that comes in chunks. And there's some plural strokes. We also have a loaf T, so it's feminine. The word means seed, and I think it does relate to the verb to go forth. After all, seeds germinate and bring forth life. It would have been pronounced something like peret. This is followed by our God sign. And the hieroglyphs after that tell us it's the adjectival form of God, nechery, divine. So altogether, it's divine seed. Next, we have the water sign N and the tethering ring nich, which means of. Divine seed of whom? Well, we have a God, and it's our tomb. Okay, that makes sense. Remember when we were talking about myths and Atum created the other gods by himself? Well, he did it by masturbation, which gives us the divine seed. So Tutankhamun is being called the divine seed of Atum. If we take this section from the top, we have the good god, living, likeness of Ray, divine seed of Atum. Now, let's continue with the inscription. We're familiar with all these hieroglyphs. First is the sedge plant, the symbol of Upper Egypt. It's also the word for south and was pronounced resi. This is followed by a B, the symbol of Lower Egypt. From our lecture on the names of the kings, we remember that this is a preamble to a king's name. Then we have Neb, which means every, all, and Lord. Since we're dealing with the king's name, Lord's the best bet. Lord of what? The two lands. Those are two spits of land. Finally, we come to the king's name, Neb Keperu Re, which may mean something like the lordly manifestation of Re. Remember, Keper, the beetle, means to exist. Let's continue with the king's second name. As we know, the duck is pronounced Sa and means sun. The solar disk doesn't have a stroke, so it doesn't mean sun or day. Again, in this case, it means the sun god ray, even though it doesn't have the god determinative. As I said, space is limited. You expect abbreviations. So Tutankhamun is the son of Ray. Now the cartouche. The Amun part comes first because of honorific positioning. The god's name is always written first, no matter how the name was pronounced. Then we have the Tut part, the loaf, chick, loaf. And finally the Ankh. So that's Tutank Amun, the living image of Amun. But there are still some hieroglyphs in the cartouche to translate. We have the crook, which was pronounced heka and means ruler. Remember how on Tutankhamun's coffins he's shown holding the crook and flail, the symbols of kingship? I wouldn't be surprised if the bishop's crook in Christianity didn't come from Egypt. 
So Tutankhamun is ruler of what? The next two hieroglyphs answer that. The first one, a pillar, was pronounced Iunu, and it's the symbol of the city called On in the Bible and Heliopolis, sun city by the Greeks. We've seen that before. It's easy. So Tutankhamun is ruler of On, not the one in the north. The next hieroglyph, our sedge plant, is the word for south. Tut is here called ruler of southern On, which is Thebes or Luxor. The cartouche is followed by two more hieroglyphs we're familiar with. The first is D to give, and the last is Ankh, and we can read it as given life. Putting the whole thing together, we get the good God, living likeness of Re, divine seed of Atum, king of upper and lower Egypt, lord of the two lands, Neb Keperu Re, son of Re, Tutankhamun, ruler of Thebes, given life. That's the inscription on the right side of the mirror. This mirror was used during Tutankhamun's life. There's nothing funerary about the inscription. Tut isn't referred to as the Osiris or anything like that. This was an inscription intended to be seen by the living. 